currently it is late September. The garden season is winding down and the tomato season is now essentially over due to a combination of cold weather and late blight. Before things completely finish out and my remaining tomatoes rot, I did want to make a video comparing four varieties of roughly speaking yellow or orange tomatoes that I grew out this year. Some of them are new for me and some are old favorites of mine. The smaller cherry tomato here is Hagen's Little Yellow. I received this seed as a free sample packet from Seed Savers Exchange probably about four or five years ago. I'm actually very fond of this variety. It's very sweet, it has a good clear flavor, it's productive. The fruits keep a long time. These tomatoes I picked over two weeks ago and kept out of the refrigerator and they still haven't rotted or split for the most part. The other thing I find really fascinating about Hagen's Little Yellow is that a significant portion of the fruit, not all of them, but a good portion, have multiple locules so that they look like miniature beefsteak tomatoes instead of cherry tomatoes, which the locules are the seed cavities here. This is an interesting and odd trait for a cherry tomato, but these have a great taste. It's productive. It's a regular leaf huge sprawling plant. It's not quite as large as a Matt's Wild Cherry, but it is close. The two are similar in growth habit and leaf form. But yeah, that's Hagen's Little Yellow. I don't know if there's a commercial source for it, honestly, but it's a nice little tomato for sure. The next tomato is Sweet Sue. Named and selected by the famous Craig LeHoulier, North Carolina. It's part of the dwarf series of tomatoes that have a very unusual and remarkable habit. They have the compact dwarf rugose leaves and thick stems that a determinate tomato would have, but they're technically indeterminate in growth habit in that they do grow all season they have a very high leaf to fruit ratio and they produce fruits that have a proper heirloom type flavor. Sweet Sue has probably been one of the better tasting of the Dwarf series. I trialed about a dozen of the Dwarf series tomatoes this year and Sweet Sue was definitely up there. It might be the best flavored one that I've tried and I know it's the favorite of a lot of people. It's a pretty decent sized one for the Dwarf series. It was easily five feet tall and definitely required some staking or caging and was very productive of pretty respectable sized beefsteak shaped fruit. A nice, uh, sweet, fairly mild but good taste. This is just a nice tomato. It's a very light color though. I think it verges almost on being white. It's different than the other yellow or orange type tomatoes that I've had. The Hagen's Little Yellow is more of a bright canary true yellow, and this is a much lighter shade of yellow. But this is Sweet Sue from the Dwarf Series tomatoes. Very nice one. If you're going to grow the Dwarf Series, I'd say this is one of the best ones. So the next one is a classic. This is Golden Jubilee, bred by... W. Atley Burpee Company of Pennsylvania and released in 1943. So this has an old heritage and an old pedigree. This variety was an All-American Selections winner in 1943. It's a classic tomato with a classic tomato flavor. Uh, I really like Golden Jubilee. I've been growing it and saving seeds of it for I would imagine about 12 years now and it's a nice tomato it's not the most disease resistant and it's not the most productive but the tomatoes seldom crack they seldom show any blemishes they have a good flavor it's a mild flavor but it's a good solid flavor they're reasonably meaty fairly thick walls just in a really attractive 
looking tomato and an, a nice looking tomato cut. They have an unusual blocky, almost octagonal shape that I find really attractive. This is a shame that this tomato isn't more widely grown, although it could stand to have some better disease resistance. Not a huge tomato, and it's not really what I would call a beefsteak type one. It's more of a really large slicer, but it's a really fine tomato that could definitely stand more wide recognition. The final tomato here is an interesting one and also a favorite of mine. Uh, it came to me from a relative from Tennessee and it was labeled as Paws Yellow. Uh, Paws as in Grandpa or Papa Paws. And it's a great tomato. Although this is the second year I've grown it out. I did take a few years off growing it and now it's somewhat different for me this year than it was the prior year I grew it. The prior year, which was probably about three years ago, it was closer to Golden Jubilee in that, in terms of the shape and the color, it was a little more of a slicer type, a little smaller fruited, but it was extremely meaty in the interior. There was very few seeds and extremely thick meaty interior. Now this year when I grew it out, most of them have been enormous beef steaks. The large one here is pushing two pounds and I would think that the one next to it is only a little smaller than that. We're probably talking a pound and a half for that guy. Uh, you can also see on this one there's horrendous late blight. When I picked this tomato a few days ago it looked pristine and over the last couple of days sitting in storage it's developed terrible late blight. But as you can see on the cut one here, there's very few seeds in the interior. This is an enormous tomato that is very, very meaty. There's hardly any seeds, hardly any seed cavity. It's not a terribly juicy tomato. So for being a giant beefsteak, it's very different internally than what most are. As you can see comparing it to Golden Jubilee, which is actually a fairly meaty tomato, there's far more seeds and more seed cavities than what there are in this Pause yellow. I have puzzled for a few years now as to this variety if it isn't a synonym of another variety and the only ones that I can really think of that it might be is either Dad's Sunset or Dixie Golden Giant which I think are both possibilities. I haven't grown any of the other two varieties so I can't really say. But this is a great variety. It definitely is a mild taste, a smooth texture. It, as you can see, is not extremely disease resistant, but honestly, it was more disease resistant than some other varieties that we grew. I would say this has been a really bad year for tomato disease and especially late blight. We only get late blight around here about one in five or 10 years. And we got it bad this year, but luckily it was fairly late in the season when the harvest is almost finished anyway. But there were definitely varieties that got hit harder and faster than this one, Paws Yellow. And there are varieties that are more resistant than this. But this is an enormous tomato, meaty, a good mild flavor. And I would say that that's about all for the yellow and orange tomatoes for this year. So it's. Hagen's Little Yellow, Sweet Sue, Golden Jubilee, and Paz Yellow.